Today, the nation will remember those who died in the Victorian bushfires, most killed when the perfect firestorm ripped through their communities with cyclonic force on Black Saturday. But even as we mourn, the federal and Victorian governments and the residents themselves are starting to rebuild the communities devastated by those fires. Agriculture Minister Tony Burke has just returned from a visit to farms and recovery centres in Victoria and the inland sea of water that was once farming land in Queensland and he joins us now. Tony Burke, welcome to Sunday Agenda. Hi. Now you've just been on this tour a couple of days in Victoria and Queensland. Let's start with Victoria. I understand you met a number of farmers, uh, a beef farmer who'd lost a lot of his fencing and had, had huge fodder problems and also orchardists whose apples were as black as passion fruit. That's, that's right. It's uh, the damage for a time there, people understandably weren't turning to the damage to their businesses uh, because they, they had to deal with the human tragedy. Uh, now people are, are starting to get to the beginnings of working their way through the damage that, that has occurred to their businesses and the, the very beginnings of that recovery. So it's, it's an extraordinary time and a difficult time for them and there's been a consistent story that has been put to me by almost every farmer which is all the bits that were insured were the bits that have survived and oh. overwhelmingly where the destruction has hit uh, have been losses that, that then fall directly to the farm business. Yeah. So are they intending to rebuild a lot of those farmers that you spoke to? Oh, and it's not just them rebuilding, it's the community helping them rebuild. Uh, consecutive days I'd go from farm to farm and find an army of volunteers there, uh, ripping out the old fencing, uh, re-staking uh, re out the young apple trees that had survived. Uh, and so you, 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 you will find this contrast on any property between the, the utter destruction and then this army of volunteers, which will be from neighbouring farms that survived, farmers from different areas. There, there was a couple touring Australia that had started in Sydney, have been travelling 18 months, uh, who I then met in a farm in Gippsland, uh, who were ripping out fencing. And uh, that's helping, helping with the grieving process, helping with trying to establish some level of optimism. Uh, one farmer, when I mentioned the, the optimism he, he was showing, he just looked straight back to me and said, well, Tony, that's all we've got left. Uh, and the So were you surprised by that sense of optimism and also, no doubt, a sense of humour? Oh, that's right. I mean, the, the optimism did surprise me uh, because you, you know the level of grieving that people are going, are going through. You've got some sense of that from, from what you understand from the news before you get there. Uh, but the, the optimism took me by surprise. Uh, but part of that, part of the optimism you know is, is being clung onto and pushed forward uh, in the absence of there being much else. Uh, the, the volunteer assistance has been incredible because farmers generally are not people who will ever ask for help. Uh, and so a lot of the volunteers... Very independent that's and right. often they're, they're sole kind of workers, aren't they? Oh, oh that's right. And the, the classic example of this was uh, checks for farmers in the Brisbane, in the Queensland floods, uh, and their determination straight away was to sign them over to Victoria. Oh, it was extraordinary, uh, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and so that's, that sort of independence has people very reluctant to seek help. Uh, and so a lot of the volunteer organisations haven't been waiting for the request. Uh, be it Rotary or be whatever uh, group has, has done the coordination or the VFF, they just rung the farmer that morning and said, oh, there's going to be 30 people, you'd better let us know which fencing you want done first. Uh, now, it's, it's a mammoth task and a few days of volunteer help doesn't get you over the length of the recovery. Uh, but there's no doubt on the ground that sort of assistance started straight away. So what will get them over those months of recovery that's going to take? Nothing can undo the damage and the, the full extent of the damage to businesses uh, and farms uh, in Victoria, for example, we don't fully know. And depending on what follows in the next few weeks, it could be worse again. Uh, bizarrely, the, the worst thing that could happen for most of these farms in Victoria now would be a really heavy downpour. Uh, because we're not just talking about a fire that took out trees and fences. Uh, there was an area that, that I went through in Gippsland where the dirt uh, there was just no undergrowth at all and just black trees uh, sticking up. Uh, and I asked what the level of undergrowth had been there previously. They said, oh, Tony, no, it was a metre high and you couldn't see through it. 
Now that's all gone completely. Mm. If we get light rain and enough to start sparking some regrowth, then that'll make a big difference to the recovery. A heavy downpour will take all the soil away. Mm. It'll and all go straight do, into the river systems. Yeah, but they do still need rain in parts of Victoria to actually really douse those That's fires. right, where the fires are going. But in the areas that it's been through, if we follow with a particularly heavy, heavy downpour, uh, there'll, be, there'll be years of topsoil that just wander off the property. You met with members of the Victorian Farmers Federation. You also went to the uh, Traralgon Recovery Centre and uh, met a number of people there, including the firefighters. What sort of stories did they tell you and, and what sense were you getting by what the end, towards the end of the second week after this disaster happened? Well, certainly at Traralgon, it's, it's not just the farmers there at the recovery centre. Mm -hmm. There's also people who, who live in more residential accommodation and have lost their homes. Uh, one home that we went past uh, actually had a sign up uh, renovator's delight, um, <laughs> la large skylight, charcoal interior. Um, oh, the black sense of humour. That's right. That sort of warms that's your right. Heart yeah, really, yeah. I it? went down and spoke to the bloke and said, Oh, is this your property? I saw the sign. He said, Yeah, my, my wife put that up. She's got a better sense of humour than me at oh, the moment. Oh, yeah. Trying um, to see some sense that's of right. humour in it. That's right. So there, there's that. There's also the places like the recovery centre are trying very hard to make sure that people keep their safety now, too. Um, in that How do you a, mean? a lot of these properties would have had asbestos in them. Oh. And so to make sure that people don't just go there and start cleaning up their home That's right. uh, and find that the, the challenges uh, you know, on this day of mourning uh, aren't then repeated 20 years down the track. But also, as, as we understand it, a lot of the trees are, you know, may have burnt out hollows. They still may not be safe until perhaps SES gets in there um, you know, and cuts a few down. The, some of those areas are still not safe to go into, are they? That's right. There's some, some real, real dangers that are still there. And there's a, a natural desire from people to want to start that sort of clean-up straight away. I mean, we're talking about the same farmers who, uh, these are the farmers who helped fight the fires. The, they then uh, are now going through the grieving with everybody else and they want to be part of the recovery straight away too. Uh, but there's some safety issues in how quickly you, you engage with that and making sure that the, the state authorities that are doing parts of the clean up there's some areas where, for safety's sake, it really needs to be done by them. All right, on the financial side, there's the first round of assistance, $25,000 grants to farmers and small businesses, as well as interest-free loans. Briefly, how do people qualify? How do they access those? Oh, for those, there's a, a financial authority in Victoria set up by the state government that people make the applications to. But you go to a place like the Traragon Recovery Centre uh, and you're in a hall, and it's not a matter of waiting to find the government agencies. They're all sitting around on tables there. But They're that's for the people who come into town. And we know right. that some residents haven't come into town. They haven't left their houses yet. Um, so is that going to be a problem for them to access it? Uh, well, it's uh, as much as possible, uh, the, the services are getting out into the community. So um, certainly there are some people, when I was at Traugan, there was uh, a farmer there who'd come in for the first time, hadn't left the property. Mm. Uh, until then. So uh, every effort is being made to make those connections. Uh, but you're right, Helen, these connections don't, don't happen automatically uh, and some of them are taking longer than we'd like. All right, I do want to talk about Queensland. Now, you travelled by air and you got to see a large area that is, what, 120 kilometres or something at its worst mm. is covered in water. Yeah, at, at its peak, this flood was uh, the size of South Australia. Uh, and there's still places that you go to where you're looking at a flood that's horizon to horizon. But fortunately um, from that peak it has started to come down. It started it? to come down. Uh, one of the things that the, the farmers there were, were explaining to me, um, because I was right up into the Gulf country there, uh, they know that they get floods, uh, but they haven't had a flood like this one. Uh, and some of the implications of a flood so vast are quite different to what they'd normally deal with. If you have a flood for a couple of weeks, when the water goes, you can get extraordinary regrowth. But when land has been covered by water for six weeks, mm. the impact when the water goes is actually, bizarrely, identical to drought, in that nothing survives, the soil will dry out relatively quickly because there's no growth um, to, to cover it or to keep it in. 
So the the so impact like drought when the water finally does go down for the areas that have been will have been covered for six weeks. That's the expectation. All right, really brief because we've almost run out of time. Is it the case that the damage from Queensland and the damage to food production and therefore the economy will actually be worse than will be greater damage financially than in Victoria? We think so. We think so. It'll take the first muster in May or June before we know exactly what the cattle numbers are. Uh, and some cattle, the stronger ones, can swim f for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, but certainly most of the calves of the last season will have been taken out. Uh, and we've got to remember Queensland uh, is the calf factory for the Australian beef industry. Uh, so there, there will be some very significant challenges in, in total beef numbers. The full extent to that we don't know yet, uh, but we do expect uh, it will be tougher than, than in Victoria. Uh, There'll be no. We won't expect an immediate price impact on that um, out of beef. Certainly, there's also. It's not just the beef areas in Queensland, though. Sugarcane's taken a 20% hit in parts, uh, and a number of our our fruits, um, our stone fruits, and similar uh, with apples down down south. Uh, there'll be a number of fresh produce items where. If people are willing to put up, and I hope they are willing to put up with more blemished fruit for the next couple of months, uh, that will certainly, certainly help the farmers be able to do the best with the produce that has survived. All right, so all of us shoppers in um, unflood damaged areas, we really shouldn't be quite as picky as we usually are? Oh, if there was ever a time to be picky, it's not the next few months. It will make, I mean, people don't just want government assistance or ha the money that the community's raised. Ultimately, they want their businesses to work. And as consumers, we can really help make that happen qu more quickly. Tony Burke, we really appreciate you coming in today on this National Day of Mourning. Thanks for joining us. A pleasure to be here, Helen.